at you, but I am learning a lot and plan to keep learning for the rest of the show. We are talking about alternative sexual practices. For most people, sex does not include tying your partner up and whipping them until they beg for more. <laughs> Sometimes I've tied the guy up, but you know, <laughs> then I had to untie him and he went home. But for my, for my next guest, it is all in a day's work. Will you please welcome Dominatrix, Mistresses, Leslie Savage, and Alexis Flame. And thank you both for being on. is someone that um, you are the mistress of the situation, right? right? What exactly do you do? Do you, do you have sex with the people? No. No? No. Um, basically, it's a matter of taking charge, letting them give up, go back to their childhood when mommy was their goddess, mommy took care of them, and mommy told them what to do and when to do it. And so people come to you and say to you, I want to be your slave? Yes. And how do they know that you're into this? How do they smile? Do you walk around like this all day? Sometimes. I mean, yeah, I mean, how do, they, how do they know that you're willing to be the one that's going to do this to them? Well, there are a few places in uh, New York City and around the country, around the world, I suppose, where people of like minds can meet. Right. Let me explain that. Um, you do what? Tell me what you do exactly. A, a man or a woman? Do women come to you or is it men? Sometimes women. Sometimes women. Okay, now what do they say? A nice woman walks in with a pocketbook, a hat, and gloves. Or a nice man walks in with an attache and a tie. What happens? <laughs> All right, what do you, what, do they say to you, what, I, this is what I want you to do to me? What? I mean, I well, no, truly don't times, know this. For example, if we're in a, a local club, right. they'll come over to you, they'll start talking, hi, I'm so-and-so, you're mistress, and you give them a name. Um, Who do you call yourself, mistress? Mistress Leslie. Mistress Leslie, okay. Um, sometimes they'll offer to buy you a drink. It starts out just like anyone meeting in any club anywhere. Right. You know, you get started talking, you find out what they're into. If you, their interests are the same as yours, you hook up. If not, they move on, you move on. And what do you do to them? When do you, they say to you, take me upstairs and beat me until I'm black and blue? Or, well, you have to realize also, S&M isn't always pain. It isn't always just whipping. A lot of it is just more the control aspect. So, give me an example. Give me something somebody's asked you to do that you say, wow. What's the weirdest thing anyone has ever oh, asked you? God. Mistress Leslie, Mistress Leslie, suck Please? my toe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, more likely they would be sucking mine. Um, All right. Oh, God. I've had people request to lick the bottoms of my boots. Lick, to lick the bottoms of your boots, okay. To be my footstool. To, so to, you could uh, step on them. Be my ashtray. Put your ashes out. Now, did they get erections when this happens? I mean, what happens? Not necessarily. To, so then what's the pleasure that they get from this? Keeping New York clean? <laughs> The idea, like I said, once again, a lot of times it goes back to childhood. The, yeah. the opportunity to be seen with what they consider a beautiful woman. Right. To have someone in charge of them, to be allowed to do things for someone. Right, but they don't get sexually aroused, or they do? It depends on the person. Some of them do. Some of them do. Okay, now what about you? First of all, they just sent me a card. You're sitting here, I'm talking to you. You're a man. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, you've heard of women. <laughs> you've heard of women's wear daily. This is what men wear nightly. All right. Now, as a man, do the men that come to you know you're a man, or do they think you're a woman, or do women come to you? I've had all three. I've had men come to me knowing I was a man. Right. I've had men come to me thinking I was a woman and being rather shocked. Sometimes they say, sometimes they don't. What can right. I tell you? Okay. <laughs> And yes, I have had women come to me now, with, say, latent lesbian tendencies. Okay, now what do you do? Is it also they just want to be with a very strong person? Nobody, are you telling me nobody has an orgasm when they're with you? That's, that's hard to say. So what's the point of my going down to a club and picking you up and going into a hotel and having you chain me to the bed and, uh, <laughs> you know, and do things to me if I'm not going to come out of it going, woo, at one point. I mean, it's like... <laughs> do, you, 
You know what I mean? I knew she was going to pick on me. <laughs> Just trying to find out. I come from Larchmont, New York, and, and I bet you two too also. <laughs> You'd be surprised. A, but there is sexuality, obviously, uh, to involved. A very, in to a very small degree. To a small degree. Uh, now, you give, do you give pain? Do if people requested. Want, yeah. If requested. Yeah. If that's what they're into. Are you? Are either of you married or going with yes, some? Married. You're married. Now, is your husband? Submissive, or I mean, does this continue into your private life? It does carry over into um, my private life. We are both um, what's called switchable. In other words, either one of us can be dominant or submissive. Right. And we actually met in a private club for people into S and M. Into S and M. Now, when you say S and M, tell me what. Explain S and M. It is it, when do, when do you reach the point? People like pain, but when do you know there's too much pain? Have you ever had someone come to you and, and you just said, I cannot do that, or I won't do that, or... How do you know when it's, it's reaching the point beyond plain? On their end or ours? Either. All right, everyone has their limitations. Like, there are certain things that in a session a mistress will not do. For example, what won't... Oh, come on. <laughs> this is not a joke show. What, Water what, sports. Water sports, which means going to the bathroom yes. with somebody. Okay, you won't do that. No. Okay. All right. Would you? Probably not. I don't feel that's safe sex. That's not safe. Se Why isn't that safe sex? Anytime there's an exchange of any kind of bodily fluids, you're always running a risk. Okay. Okay. What have you been asked to do besides that that you just say this is too this is too difficult to do, too painful? When do you know I can't do this? This is trouble. This is going to be trouble. I've really never had a situation like that, but I've had the situation where a person would want their limits explored, and when they reach that limit, then they, ask, then they would ask the mistress to stop or to slow down. Right. Okay. What about you? Also, people say, do it till I yeah. tell you to stop. Well, what I like to do is I will set up beforehand a code, a safe word, for example, the word blue, which may not normally come up in the conversation. Right when they have reached a certain limit or if something is bothering them or they're not comfortable with the situation, I stop everything right. when they say blue and we converse. Um, the idea, to go back and forth, to listen to what they're saying, to watch their body language, to ask them questions throughout the entire session to make sure that you know what's going on and you're aware of what's going on in their heads. Right. It's very, very important. Okay, well, we want to go to commercial. When we come back, you brought some props that you use, yes. all right? Uh, can, can we show them? Can we yes. get Larry? Is that all right? Yes, yes, we can. All right. We'll, we'll be back in a moment, and we'll bring out some of the props that you brought with you. Okay, so stay with us. Mistresses Leslie Savage and Alexis Flame. Um, you were going to show me some of the props. Now, these are the props, okay? And these are things that people ask you to use mm -hmm. on the... Uh, which is... Let's start with the... Mo this is like a, a little riding crop. Right. Yes. Okay. So, you can play like horsey and... <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. Many of them have uh, <laughs> fantasies of, of... Sometimes we even wear spurs. You put... You wear... So, you get on them? Sometimes. You get on them and kick them with your spurs? Sometimes. Okay. Do you call them something like Black Beauty or... Trigger. Uh, yeah, trigger. <laughs> now, this is... These... These... They, they bring this with them or you have... No, these, we have our own. You have your own. Now, this is... A, a, what, is this a cat and nine tails? Right. Yes. Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> this can really hurt. Yeah. Yes. Especially if used improperly. So you have to know how to use it both yes. properly and improperly. Yes, unfortunately, well, in the leather scene, there are a lot of what you would call a novice dominant. Now, we believe if you don't know how to use a piece of equipment, don't pick it up because there is a certain way, like a certain whip would re uh, require a certain motion of the wrist. If you don't guide the whip properly, you can actually cause serious internal damage. So where do you go to school to learn this? <laughs> <laughs> I love you answer that question. Uh, I, I went to 
Barnard, and I don't remember that course being given. <laughs> I think it was a school of hard knocks. We didn't take Leather 101. I didn't take Leather 101. Um, leather 101. All right. Um, when I first started, yeah. um, I found that almost anyone would be willing to talk to you about it, show you their style, their techniques, uh, give you advice, introduce you to the people. Um, it's a very tight-knit group, especially here in New York. Do you know each other? Do most of you know each other? We do. We met through, we've known each of each other's reputations right. for several years. Right. We met about three or four years ago at a club down on 14th and 9th called The Vault. Right, and so that's where you might go to meet. Let me ask you, who are your clients? Pick one. <laughs> uh, anything. We have bankers, um, construction workers. Attorneys. Any, anything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, From all walks of life. From all walks. How did you know this is what you wanted to do? How did you get, you didn't just grow up and find yourself like this. Do you know what I'm saying? How, how did you figure out this is, that you're good at this? Dressing like this or being a Be, dominatrix? No, being a dominatrix. The whole thing. How did this evolve? Oh, I've always had a severe attitude problem. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> was, last thing I want to ask you, I'm sorry because Tari's right. It's so fascinating. Um, uh, and it's really totally something that uh, I never got into. Uh, uh, no, well, you know, just I was young once. Uh, what is the what is the biggest fantasy either one of you have been asked to do? You first. You're the real lady. <laughs> the, what's the biggest thing you were ever asked to? Uh, oh, I've been asked some pretty strange things. Such as? Just think of one. Um, Oh, God, now my mind goes blank, right? Um, all kinds. Um, mommy, infantilism, fantasies. Right. Um, I think the most intense one that I really couldn't deal with was a gentleman who wanted to be crucified. Uh, when do you say it's time to call a doctor? That was do you know that? Insane. Yeah, right there. Yeah. That, was, that was about when it. When you say, yeah. this man really needs mental health. This yeah. Is, yeah. And what about and you, Ben? elevator didn't go to the top floor. Yeah. With me, uh, it's a toss-up between two. I had this man who had followed me around from club to club. Right. Because I'm also a performer. Right. And he, for, he wanted to be me. Okay. That was so one. I dressed. We were about the same size. He wanted to be dressed in one of my costumes. He wanted to be me. Right. So you dressed him up as you. Yes. And what was the other one? The other one was another cross-dressing thing, another cross-dressing uh, fantasy. And it was funny as hell, it really was. Uh, <laughs> this man had a fantasy. He wanted to be dressed as a little girl getting caught dipping into mommy's pocketbook. <laughs> really? That's very specific. Yes. Yeah. So I had to change into something like somewhat tasteful to be the wicked stepmama. Right. I come back. This man is in this little red gingham dress with petticoats, his hair up in pigtails, big red circles on his cheeks. He looked like Raggedy Ann. And did you say President Bush? They're gonna find out about it. <laughs> Don't it was <laughs> I thank you both very much. As long as, again, what I say and I truly believe, if it doesn't hurt anybody and it gives people happiness and pleasure, as long as there's nothing to hurt, hurtful about it and you're over 21, who's to say yes or no? I thank you both very much.